it's always nice to start the day with a great big poo, isn't it, Chance? Honestly, I didn't get it on video, but the thought of Shiros had been down the street. Anyway, we've just nipped up to the uh, local post depot, and uh, there's a couple of parcels here. They still refuse to walk down through the archway and deliver to the brewery. They always just go to the brew shed, and that's as close as they get. Not sure what I've ordered. Aha! So, here we have float valves or float switches. You know the kind, right? Oh, they look really good as well. Stainless steel float switches. Says they're rated for 240, but come on, we know they're not. You want to be putting something like 24 volts through these. No more than that. But yes, it is actually stainless steel, which is nice. It's not very often you get that these days with these. Normally a bit chintzy. So, that's good. we put them back in that box. I ordered these because when we had the stuck sparge, if the false bottom couldn't be cured, which it was, then the plan was to go forward and make an underback. I still might, but uh, we shall see. I'm not in a rush to do that now. Now what we've got in here. This is a large flat box, which is the mini keyboard. Ha <laughs> ha! They could have put this through the letterbox, you know. So this is going to replace the big keyboard that we put on the computer in the pub last week because the big one didn't quite fit. There is this little beauty. It's nice and slim and they should be able to get that on the side next to the till and everything, right? I'll go and pop this in and we'll come back and reflect on what today's jobs are going to be. I imagine most of it is going to involve tidying up. I've got a brewery tour on Saturday so I want it to look ship shape. So I've put the keyboard in the pub and I've come back into the extremely cold brewery and uh, I've taken samples of the beers to see the progress of them all and uh, contrary to the temperatures it would appear that we seem to be holding up in terms of attenuation through the fermentation. The problem is that the end tank always just seems to be lacking somewhat in holding its temperature by. It generally lags about five degrees behind the other tanks. That's where the vacant is. So that at the moment is sitting at 9.1. The others are sitting at around 14, if you like. It's not a problem because we're 90% of the way there. Uh, the vacant usually finishes between 10.06 and 10.08 and it seems to be sat at the minute at 10.11. So we'll give it a few more days on the dry hop. I'm sure it'll come down. I split the dry hop on the vacant this time as well. For a 500 litre batch, it normally gets one and a half kilograms of mosaic directly into the fermenter as we approach final gravity, maybe a few points off, like now would be ideal, 10.11. Um, but what I did this time to, because the temperature is so low. To facilitate a little bit more aroma in there, I split the dry hopping into two batches. So one and a half kilograms went in a couple of days ago and I've just, uh, sorry, 750 grams. And I've just put the other 750 in there. And I also lifted the lid on the coconut shy and just submerged the coconut on any other hops that were floating on the surface. I imagine they're gonna rise to the top again. So I may have to do that one or two more times before we actually package the beer. But since I'm stood here with a little bit of a sample in my hand, this is the, uh, this is the best bitter that we make. This is the, one of the simplest beers that we do, although it does actually have a dry hop. You can go simpler. So this one, uh, as it's fermenting out, you feel, you can taste the sweetness levels declining in it. And once you put the dry hop in, it just gives it that earthy, spicy back note, which is conducive to the Harrison's best bitter, don't you know? Mm. But that's gonna turn out very well. 
sometimes if the fermentation temperatures get away, being a bit cool is not too bad, but if they get away, you can get a little bit of a perfumey note off of it, and I think that's some type of uh, acetaldehyde coming out of the beer, but uh, in this case, there's none present whatsoever. And then uh, I'll jump across to the vacant because the coconut's got the most powerful flavour out of the three beers. Uh, this one looks great. It's a nice light pale, really hazy. You could serve it like that in some pubs, I'll tell you. Um, you can see there's also some hot particles settling down in the bottom of the glass there. If uh, the camera will play, play ball just down here. So let's have a little slurpy poo. Mm, yeah, very clean. I've gone back to the USO 5 East with this one. Previously I was using the BRY97 because I had some in stock. I definitely cleaned it up a touch. Um, the hops present. Doesn't taste green, but it tastes fresh. I think this is going to mature and the flavour is going to come out of this beer a heck of a lot more over the next few days. And once it's had some cellar condition on it as well, I think this one is going to be a winner. And then finally, we come to the coconut shy PA. So on this pale ale, I've diverted slightly from the original coconut shy recipe uh, to use up some matanum hops that I've got. So the dry hop, instead of having mosaic in there, which gives it that tropical, uh, almost mango flavour, We've punted to dry hop with uh, Columbus and a tannum and quite frankly it's just put a little bit more of a citrus note on there but it's still within keeping and the coconut still comes through on the flavour quite heavily. It's not as present on the aroma but temperatures are cold and it is sat there uh, on the coconut dry hop. It's not really had an enough time yet. Mm. So yeah, going back in, I've already tried all these. The coconut, it hits you immediately with the creaminess of the uh, of the coconut. I imagine that's some of the coconut oils in there. Mm, it smooths the palate out beautifully. What I did this time as well, if you've not seen the video, I recommend you go back and watch it. It was something like vlog 325. Instead of just piling the uh, coconut straight in, the toasted coconut, which looks like big thumbnails almost. Uh, I ran it all through the blender, the food processor, chopped it up and it was it was fine, uh, not quite as finely at, chopped up as desiccated coconut, but it was sort of in the realms of, you know, if you get a bag of crisps and you crunch them all up, you know, do it with your workmate's crisps just to piss him off when he's not looking. Crunch all the crisps up in the bottom of the bag and when it comes to eat it, it's just like, like little crumbs in the bottom of the bag. That's about as, <laughs> as close as I can describe uh, the particle size of the coconut that went in there. So uh, I think it's allowed a lot more extraction of the flavour by doing this. And that's the way I'm going to approach it in the future, I think. But yeah, extremely, extremely satisfying drink. The Atanum pairs well with it, so it makes a good substitute if if mosaic seems to be scarce on the market. So I'll leave these here. No doubt, I'm salivating now. No doubt Stuart will want to try them when he comes in. It'd be mad not to. Uh, and what I'm gonna do in the meantime is put back together all of that, all of that stainless steel over there, look. That's all got to go back onto the boil kettle and uh, we'll get everything back in position, ready for our brewery tour on Saturday. I'm really pleased that I got to do these modifications before people come in. And I'm really pleased how clean everything's come up. Those elements look brand new.
canvas and whatnot put away, or the kit put to back together, I want to make a start on some of the garden benches for the beer garden. Um, so we've got loads of this live edge timber left. Oh, it no, it picked up from Chesterfield. And uh, I don't really want to be chopping this stuff up, because it's gorgeous, to uh, make framage out of. So all that timber there that you've just seen, all this, is uh, what we've just been to pick up. So these big boys here, 30 quid a length, these tantalised beasts, which are six inches by two, they were £17 each, and they're uh, five metres long, 4.8, whatever they come out, you know. So I'm going to get them chopped up and put together as frames, and hopefully we'll just be able to drop these big boys straight on top because they are beautiful looking pieces of wood which will make fantastic bench tops. I don't want to do anything to them. I don't want to split them down the middle, I don't want to cut them or anything. I was initially going to cut them into two, see how the drainage channel if you like down the middle, but I uh, thought better of it because it's just far too nice. And uh, if it's kept as is, if I ever want to repurpose it for some interior furniture, then I'll be able to just uh, do exactly that. Bit of water staining on it, so if anything it just needs sanding and uh, or just a quick hit with a plane. But quite frankly I'll do that when it's in situ. So the main thing for us to do now is to start making the frames. So not going to be for this piece of timber, it's going to be for the bigger ones which are 2.8 metres long by 800 wide. So we'll start those first and uh, then we'll work on the smaller ones once we've got a better idea what exactly we are doing. <laughs> went. This was one of the easiest builds I've had to do for a long time and uh, I think most of the work was actually done in the wood yard when this timber was cut. All I've done basically is mock up a dead simple A-frame out of big thick sort of 6 by 2 timbers you know, big solid pieces of wood and then we've got some massive 12 inch by 2 inch or 300 by 50 mil planks to go on the side. The planks aren't ash like the top is and nor is the frame. I think it's German whitewood but quite frankly you can't really tell. Once this beast of a table, 10 seater I might add, it you squeeze 12 on there if you wanted. Once it's been outside and weathered for a little bit and I've rubbed some Danish oil on it and it's joined by its compatriots, yes, 
two more absolute monsters to be made here. This one's got a lot of, you know, rot and, well it's not, it's a knot. Fill that with resin. So once it's joined with these two, and there's several other tables that I've got over in the corner to make, I think the beer garden is gonna be a draw for miles around. Really looking forward to getting these pieces of furniture out there and uh, into use. Getting the vacant gesture on them is the plan. So that's a, another successful day in the bag today, folks. I'm gonna wrap it up. Stuart has uh, done a fantastic job with the aid of one of his friends, Cassie, and got through loads of these casts today. Uh, we've nearly cracked the back of it. We've got the plastic ones to do and the aluminium ones. Well, I'm still to decide where to go with those ones. So we're on target, it's Wednesday, it's 4.45. I'm going home to see the kids, folks. And uh, of course, edit this vlog for your viewing pleasure. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.